fun. <laughs> He's just so mm. what a great soul. Uh, how how is that? What how, tell us a little bit? And I know a couple of our guests have spoken a little bit about the power of uh, of that. And let's mix uh, the Wim Hof and the bread. Begin to tell us why are these tools that you use so much with your clients and with everyone? Why are these so powerful? And how can they help people? Okay, so. Um this is what I'm going to share is going to uh, okay. uh, create a lot of deception in the people because I love I that. Start- you are okay. my friend for that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I started, um, I get certified by Wim Hof in 2014. So we are almost 2022. So it's um, maybe eight years ago. And I left very, very, um, at least one year. Uh, I love Wim beyond measure for what he did with the breath and how. And uh, it was a very good catalyst for me to uh, dig more in my journey. Because the breath was there from the Qigong, Tai Chi, and martial art I was practicing. And um, he reconnected me with this practice really similar to the uh, Tibetan called Tum. So it, this is the only thing I can say about Wim. It's like he was able to um, be the catalyst to unleash so many things uh, in me and to believe in the power of the breath. Um, I can talk about Dan Brule. Dan Brule, or you know him personally. Oh, yes. He, was- he has been in our podcast and he's coming back. So we, we have a podcast where we love him. I mean, yes. he's like, uh, he's like, a, I'm, Dan, I know you hear this. So you, for, we love you so much. You're like the teddy bear of the breath. I love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> the teddy bear. I, <laughs> and with him, it was to put more color in my palette. Oh. Uh, now I'm, I'm working in the program of uh, Stanislas Groff, Steve Groff, the father of the holotropic breathing. Uh, you have so many flavor in um, like Buteiko, a Sistema Breathing, Qigong, Pranayama. Uh, I want to breathe with Sufi people. So it's so many, so many things. And what I share that because... Um, um, in the Bible, they say at the beginning was the verb. No, at the beginning, not was the verb. At the beginning was the breath. Because you cannot say a word without taking a breath. So you cannot speaking, <clears throat> inhaling. You need to inhale and exhale. So why I share that? Because um, yeah. Wim was a very fantastic experience. And I appreciate that. And it was only three colors in my palette. So now it's like um, uh, with all these colors, um, my sense of uh, breath has really, really uh, took a different meaning. Wow. And, and, and I, I noticed, you know, you, you keep training the breath. I love your, your, you have like such a multidimensional approach, very holistic, very multidimensional. But I love of you that you're so focused on excellence. I can feel it. And anyone that meets you, it's, it's that you are a living, walking invitation for excellence. And uh, you use all of these tools just to have, I love what you said, to have more flavors in the palate, palate right? To have more experiences of life. So how do you... How do people learn with you? Like if I, Yvonne, I just met you and I want to learn from you, your modalities, priming, uh, bread work. Uh, how, how, what, what is usually, what is a typical class session teaching with you? So basically once a month, I do a, a live session in Malibu. And I coach uh, very little people per year in one-on-one. Uh, I've got some coach and friends in Spain who uh, teach my style uh, because I focus like a martial art. As a coach, I cannot make uh, win uh, the season of several teams. When you're a coach, you have one team, you coach them, they they win the season or not, or they're very close to their goal. And this is what I do. After that, once a month, you can come. But what I do basically, uh, you know, this saying in breath, uh, in the breathwork community, show me how you breathe. I will tell you who you are. And what I do, it's like going back to the base, uh, to be with the people and to know what is important for you and knowing this will stop and none of these things will matter. What is important? And let's go back to the essence. Let's go back to what matters the most. The quality of your breathing, the quality of your water, the quality of your food, the quality of your sleep, the quality of your affection, and the quality of your movement. Because this is a fundamental need. All the reds are not needs. Like when you can feed all these needs, now you can be a superhuman. And this is what we want. 
to have this experience, amazing experience on earth, to make one breath at a time, one step at a time, one day at a time, one victory at a time. And all the rest is just imagination. And what you suffer, the past or the future, it's just happening between your ears. So for sure, you can hold things inside your body. And as I said, the issue with the healing community, it's like how you work the cognitive, so the blah, blah, blah. How you work the somatic, only in the body. How you work the spiritual, using the breath or medicine. And really, it's like healing is not an identity, it's a transition. And you need to heal between your ears. You need to heal your body and you need to heal what is this invisible, the spirit. And when you can heal this three part, now you can move forward. We never will move on because we recollect evidence and memories for to create our identity. And when the suffering is here, it's to put a stem time on that to be able to move forward because we never yeah. move on. So my work is to work on all these dimension. It's what excellence is important because for me, it's about impact. This will stop. I don't know when. I pretend I know when it's going to happen. It's to be full. I need to keep this humility. I'm an external student. This is very important. A second it's like how I can serve you at my best today with my tools and to be sure when you leave my space, you feel better when you come in inside my space. Wow, that's so beautiful and it's so true. We have had the privilege to learn from your wisdom in our network for human empowerment television that keeps growing. You know, you've been part of our community and and we are. Yes, because it's in Spanish. Spanish. Yeah, do you speak Spanish, French, English? How many languages do you speak? Besides, you speak bread. <laughs> yeah, bread, Spanish, English, French. <laughs> so, wow. So, you know, you are such an incredible soul. And I love that you are a mother monk and really come with this holistic, multidimensional approach for supporting humans to truly become superhuman. You know, to truly become superhuman, because why not? Why not? And I, I so love also how uh, focused you are in um, in organic living, eating. I've seen you, how you travel, how conscious you are of, you know, you carry your like wooden bamboo spoons. You carry your recyclable water bottle. I love that. You know, I, I do that. I, I have those things too. So I notice, you know, you notice who you are. So, oh, say, so I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. And uh, yes. I just, you know, just go, they're like uh, simple questions, but uh, we want you to answer them. The first thing that comes to your mind. And after the questions we'll do, we'll, we'll, we'll go into the blessing and the closure of this podcast. I feel I need more time with you, you know, because you, I really, right now it's like an introduction and all this wisdom that you have. Uh, let me ask you something before I go to these questions, because you and I connected a lot through that. How important is to be in flow in these times of where people are talking about vaccines, viruses, when people are talking about reds and blues and rights or lefts. And, and, uh, and, and a lot of us, not all of us, but a lot of us are distracted by the media, distracted by propaganda. How important now is to stay or access that prime yourself for a state of flow, which I truly feel that the Tao, right? The Tao, the state mm. of flow. Uh, how, what do you have to say for the circumstances of these times regarding that? Mm. So it's very interesting. And um, what you share um, um, last uh, month, I traveled for three months and during one month and a half, uh, I traveled in seven countries. And for me, it's like um, one of uh, my uh, mentor and guru say, it's like all the rules are my rules. And uh, when I go in a country, I respect the rules of every countries. And, um, and um, we need to understand uh, um, when we, Talk about racism, racism. It's like uh, if you read what is a race, it's human race. After that, it's ethnicity. Uh, the color of the skin is about, we talk about ethnicity, but it's only one human race. We are the only one who have so much ism, so much separation. 
It's like we have subspecies and one species, a human species, with a religion, with a politics, with vaccine, no vaccine. And for me, it's if it matter for you, do what you need to do. For me, it's like I cannot suffer something is between my uh, my ears. I don't watch TV. Uh, it's something. It's like I watch Netflix movies. I like for sure. I'm not fed by the media. Uh, everything it's like on my feed is very selective because I don't consume. I produce mostly content, and I read. And reading is something people lost because we are in this crawling generation and feeding. It's uh, we are so desensitized about what it's feeling, as I share, um, we cannot stay five minutes by ourselves without doing nothing and investing. Uh, do I have a quality breath? Do I have a quality water, quality food, quality sleep, quality affection, quality movement? And this is going to make me a superhuman. So um, my thing is that if it matters for you, do it. If it's not, it's up to you. I, I cannot say to the people what they have to do. Um, what I think, it's like we cannot pull and push people. It's like tugboating people. And we can talk maybe another day what means the term tugboating people. What we can do is to be a lighthouse, to shine from within and let people. Because um, we have this saying, say, uh, it says it's like uh, you cannot uh, coach or teach your family and kids, you can love them only and let love guiding us. And this is what it is. It's let love guiding us. And because people are suffering, when whatever the choice they're going to do, it's for an outcome. And we know that in NLP, we always do something for an outcome. And most of the people are scared. I understand that. And when people that fed they feed their scare with more and more things, it's very hard to be rational because we're not rational being. We are emotional being using our rational for to justify what's happening between our ears. And whatever you want, you can talk with people and they will always find excuses, facts, yes. justification for just justify what they feel. And yeah. this is how it is. Absolutely. Justifications are confessions of what I don't want to work on myself. That's, I always say that. Justifications, yeah, excuses and justifications are really just, you know, our confessions of, hey, this is what I don't want to do. This is how lazy I am. But mm. I can get very, very passionate about that. I love that. Thank you so much. So let's go into the questions. This should be fun. Well, at least mm. I think. And, you know, this, this, wisdom, um, this wisdom that you just shared, uh, I, I really uh, encourage people to listen to the podcast again and again, because you really gave us like a masterclass on priming, on excellence, on the quality of food, life, breathing, thinking of being a consumer, uh, of being a producer versus a consumer, right? Of being a creator versus a predator, of being a strategist instead of a parasite strategy, uh, strategies, like instead of being a co-creator, instead of depending from others. And it's, you know, these are topics that we require to infuse right now in our humanity as we evolve as human civilization. So take a deep breath. <laughs> and now we go to some fun questions where or some deep and see what my beautiful friend um, Chris has to say. So what do you think your future self of 10 years from now wants you to know in this moment what my first because usually they ask what do you wish you had known what would you take to your past self what would you tell to you 10 years ago well I like to do things different if your future oh. self was here and he will advise you 10 years from tomorrow to today what will he say to you I think he will say it's great to have a coffee with you it's like uh, it's great to have a coffee with uh, you I felt that. Ah, my future self is telling Chris, invite Yvonne. <laughs> she wants to drink the tea. Okay, what is your? What has been uh, one of your biggest failures? Say quote, quote, and what did you learn from it? Oh, I. So it's very interesting. Uh, I, I'm going to make a next answer, and. Yeah. Um, when I was uh, in my 20s, and um, for one lesson, 
or one victory, uh, I want to say, when I was in my 20s, for one victory, I had at least 30 lessons. When we call lesson now, it was failure. So in my 